Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Stand by. Stand by.
If you're done on low show clear, if clear, close cylinder and holster. Well, we're back with another match video. First one of 2021. And we're going to go uh, in terms of commentary from the bad stuff to the good stuff to some what if stuff. So first off, the bad. Uh, gun reliability is the number one concern, kind of the elephant in the room. I thought I'd sorted out the light strikes over the off-season, but evidently I have not, and now I have a second problem with the action freezing. I endeavored to solve the first one by putting the 10-pound hammer spring back in, and that was sufficient to light my Winchester primers last year with the factory hammer. If I can't make it work this year with Federals, then clearly the problem is somewhere else. The second problem, the action stiffness, has at least two causes. Cause one, the geometry of the hammer dog and the double action components on a Ruger trigger are apparently pretty important, and also not fully interchangeable. I was running a bobbed hammer in this video, you might have noticed, with an eye toward eventually bringing the trigger pulled down further by clipping some coils off of a trigger spring. When I swap the hammer dogs between my stock hammer and the bobbed one, neither hammer works, so clearly there's more to the geometry there that I've considered in the past. The short version of this fix is that I went back to the stock hammer for now, and I will put up with what I've got. The second problem is that Rugers, or at least this Ruger, like uh, heavy lubrication in three or four critical areas around the trigger assembly. I'm going to make a video about that at some later date, since I consider random videos less, less authoritative than written text, and I don't want to present myself as some kind of an authority on Ruger revolvers. Uh, thing number two that wasn't great, position entry and transitions. Looking at the video, I'm pretty slow to get the first shot off when I come into a position after moving at speed, and the only stage where it wasn't an obvious problem was stage three, where I was a mistake or two away from winning that one, maybe. Item three, the belt. My Midway USA belt may get retired, or perhaps traded, uh, plus some cash, to a buddy who's looking both to divest himself of a DAA belt and set one up for PCC. Why? Because it's definitely not stiff enough for the DAA holster. The belt kind of sags and bends, and a sharp edge on the set screw for the muzzle support on the holster ended up cutting the front of my khaki leg up over the course of the day. Well, on to the good stuff. The new reload technique. Let me tell you, it is so much faster in practice than what I was doing last year. Some of that is that probably... I was probably that my form last year was never very good on that kind of reload, but even so, I had some good reloads in the two-second range when I was moving at a pretty sporty pace, which I definitely could not do before. Uh, item number two, confidence in sight zero. Toward the end of last year, I began to have a bit of nagging doubt that ammo changes had thrown off my sights, and on the first preseason range trip I took a few weeks ago, I verified that. I spent a little bit of time and a little bit of ammo getting it right at 10 yards, and that paid off on some of those longer-range mini-poppers through this match. Item number three. The match design. Once again, high praise for the DSS guys and their stage designs. Your everyday local match is constrained by volunteer time and budget, and you'll often see less complicated stages at local matches on that account. None of the four field courses of this one had that feel to me. Every single one of them presented a number of viable stage play and options, and without going back and reviewing the video, I can only think of one place where a field course had an obvious array of three or more targets you had to take from one spot. Plus, there's another revolver shooter out that way who shoots that match on a regular basis, and, uh, since DSS has a set Sunday afternoon start time, I think I'm probably going to be back a couple of times this season. And on to what if. So this is a little, or more than a little unfair to the other people at the match. What if I didn't make any of the mistakes that I make due to inadvisable gun tinker, tinkering or lack of training without giving them the same courtesy? Nevertheless, here we are. I spotted myself some time and points in a couple of categories here. The big one is time. I reduced the amount of time I spent uh, on dealing with gun problems on the clock uh, by that amount of time. I I reduced my time on bobbled standing reloads, on the one classifier, and on the table pickup on uh, stage one, and in one or two places, notably on stage three, the 18 round course, uh, where I wanted to see if doing just a little better would have given me the stage win, I turned a miss into a delta, being as uncharitable as, pos to, uh, as, uncharitable as possible to myself while still being uh, pretty charitable to myself. On stage three, it put me up to a 90% but didn't get me the win. Anyway, the results aren't all that dramatic. I ended up being about 30 seconds slower than the Revolver M guy instead of a minute. 
uh, with very similar final points that put me up to 83% of his match. I also gained 8% in the handgun match and two places. I don't think I recommend using what ifs for this kind of analysis on a regular basis, but it's a fun way to console myself after a pretty below average performance, so here you are. Well, thanks for watching. See you next time.